Hello, I'm Sue Thompson. I'm the demonstrators rep representative for Kent area or Kent Floral Art as we shall be called. Um, I'm doing an arrangement today which was, is ideal for somebody who's new to flower arranging and who wants to join in National Flower Arrangers Day on the 7th of May, next Friday. And the idea is that you place an arrangement outside your house, maybe um, at your doorstep, or in your porch, um, somewhere where a passerby can, can see it easily, maybe in your hall window and um, uh, or at your, at your gate, at your gate post. Um, you could say anywhere that somebody will see it and then with some information attached to it that's available off the NAFAS website or kentfloralart.co.uk website. So I'm going to be using this bucket, just a smallish um, zinc effect bucket and into that I would normally be thinking about putting some floral foam. This is a, a whole block of floral foam as you can tell I've already cut it but it's um, a block of the Oasis floral foam and in the past we might have thought about using a goodly sized piece of foam and then maybe cutting pieces to hold the foam in place and all sorts. But now the move is to use far less floral foam and uh, use the minimum amount that we can. So, say this I would normally cut in the olden days, I'd have cut it and used two thirds of a block. So I would put it just sitting a little bit above the rim of the pot. And then this third of a block I would put somewhere to then use it in a smaller design. But now, I can economise and also help the environment by not using so much by taking this third of a block and placing that into, this is my blue Peter moment, in that I've got a yoghurt pot, a large yoghurt pot that um, I've removed the label from, but I put the third of a block of foam into there, I have soaked it and trimmed the edges down a little, so you sort of chamfer off the edges so that it fits down into your pot quite snugly and it won't move. And then that fits very nicely inside my bucket as you will see, but it's a little bit low. So I've got another pot, Abracadabra, and I think that one will then raise it up just sufficiently for me to be able to arrange my flowers. So what shall I use? I'm going to just use my uh, plant material from the garden and a few supermarket flowers. And I've got some lovely Aero Metallicum Pictum, which grows in my garden. And um, it's growing quite um, robustly at the moment. So I'm going to uh, hope that it goes into the floral foam without any problem. Um, sometimes it's not very keen so you sometimes need to just coax it in. What I do is just hold my finger and, th and thumb and just gradually ease the flower stem in. I'm holding it quite near to the base of the stem, as you might notice. So finger and thumb and just feed it in. If you try and hold it too far near the leaf, um, it will perhaps bend and buckle and then you're um, then having to remove it and, and recut. I'd normally say cut your leaves um, uh, at an angle, but because of the softness of the air and leaves, it's probably best to cut those straight across so that it's a little bit easier to um, make up more strength, sort of coax them into the foam. They're a lovely arrow shaped um, leaf, aren't they? With gorgeous markings, which you can see in the, in the tone of them picks up the grey of the bucket quite well, I think. And it's a lovely time of year, isn't it? With all the spring leaves or everything, all the new shoots coming and appearing in the garden and the things that you've forgotten about, all those spring bulbs you planted that uh, suddenly appear and you think, oh yes, I'd forgotten about that. I knew that I planted something there, but I'd forgotten exactly what it was. So it's an exciting time. So just sort of creating a collar of these leaves. You could use um, some other leaves. You could use whatever you've got to hand, really, whatever you can find in your garden or perhaps in the hedgerow. Um, 
but um, always be careful about where, where you pick that it is, um, it's not private property. So large ivy leaves would work well around this, um, some beautiful marked um, ivy leaves or um, begonia leaves, although they're a little bit rounded. Um, it's quite nice to have the, um, the point. Um, fats hedgera, which is like a cross between ivy and the fatsia plant. And uh, when they're growing a little bit more than they are at the moment, then hosta leaves as well would, would be very nice. So that's just, let's say, making a, a collar around your, um, around your container. <coughs> Excuse me. Then into that, I'm going to add some uh, variegated box, just some small pieces of box, just to add a different uh, texture and, um, and form. The box is very handy in that it grows um, quite well and doesn't like mind being pruned at all. It can be cut very short between the pairs of each leaf so that you can um, make one sprig go a very long way and uh, and it um, propagates very easily from, from cuttings so again I say it's such a useful plant to have and because of the way that it grows it also sort of has a slight um, waftiness to it if you like and one good thing about the box is that if if you feel that um, the piece is not the right in the right place you can always just get down between the, the leaves and just trim that little piece off and then pop that down low into your arrangement it's a very robust plant the only problem is that of course it uh, suffers from um, box blight and you get to see a lot of box bushes sort of going brown um, touch wood it hasn't happened to me yet but i'm sort of watchful because all you have to do is cut out that affected part and um, and dispose of it. Don't put it on your compost um, heap or anything like that. Um, because you don't really want it spreading to any other um, box plants in your garden. Just one of those uh, nuisances that we seem to suffer from time to time, like uh, ash die back and uh, Dutch elm disease. Sort of there's always some. Some little blighters out there to get us if it's not the coronavirus. So, um, but we will somehow get get through. So I've put it in the the box, as you can see, and still with my collar of. Air. And now I'm going to add some supermarket flowers. This was a mixed bunch with some lovely golden roses in it. And I'm wanting to cut the rose so that it stands a little bit above the um, the other plants, um, just so that you can see the the head. It's a little bit long. It's always difficult to judge. As don't want it too high but equally you don't want to be tucking it down so low that you don't actually see see the rose and enjoy enjoy its flower so in my bunch i had six roses um, so it's a case of how you place them you could do something quite fancy where you make a, a much larger arrangement with um, flowers being quite tall but uh, I'm opting for a simple round design. Focusing it into the foam. Lovely sunny colour, isn't it? Yellow. Um, 
lovely for spring when everything's growing and equally for um, the summertime when you're sort of thinking about holidays and sunshine and the beach, what have you. So you're just sort of wanting to space your roses around your, your, your um, bucket. I'm struggling here to find some home. I'm not last one. With the rose you get what they call a, a guard petal and it's one that's sort of got a, a slightly wrinkled shape but um, some florists like to remove that because they, um, they say, well, it's there to protect the rose as it's growing but I think it's rather attractive having that marking on it and that sort of different texture so I, I like to leave my guard petal on. I cut my um, stems at a, an angle just so that it creates a point so it makes it easier to get the flower into the foam and also so that it then opens up the cells and you've got a larger surface area for soaking, getting the moisture, the water supply up into the, uh, up into the rose stem and so that it will last longer. Sorry about that interruption. <laughs> so it's progressing with the flowers in. And in the bunch I had some Lysianthus or Eustoma, which is this flower that has multi-headed um, the flowers on it, this one in purple with the little bud there um, with the white sort of markings on it and you can choose to take the pieces separately which I probably will do for this because um, you just get more for your money then don't you. Um, lovely thin point there just to give a different form and Again, work these into your um, design. And the purple and the yellow sort of um, really bring out the best in each other, don't they? It's all to do with complementary colours and the yellow makes, I always think that yellow makes every colour sing anyway, but um, against the purple. It's uh, quite spectacular, I think. You always remove your leaves so that you've got uh, a nice clear stem to pop into your arrangement. So again, that's coming along well. And then the last thing I had in my bunch, oh, there's another little piece of it. I don't want to leave that one behind. I can pop it. Just and I've got some Eryngium, which was also in the bunch, just one stem, but gorgeous blue, spiky textured um, plant. Uh, I just love it. It's, um, some people call it sea thistle, but it is, it's called Eryngium. And again, it's one of those multi-stemmed um, flowers that you can then cut into smaller pieces if that suits your arrangement, but equally lovely for um, uh, something more drapey. You could use it in a um, 
pedestal equally you could cut them very short and use them in a, a tapestry style arrangement so it's going to cut that down into five parts so i've got short stems and just pop those in It's just a, a lovely contrast between the smooth velvety texture of the rose and the spiky texture of the uh, the eryngium and the curl um, and softness of the delicacy of the uh, lysianthus. And if you want to, you can just look round and you'll see if there's any little gaps that you want to fill in. Um, but I think I'd be quite happy with that. Um, you could scale this up, put it into a larger bucket if you wanted to, and um, just make it um, with a few more flowers and, and larger leafed foliage, perhaps. Um, instead of the arum, I say you could use hosta. Instead of the uh, box, you could use some euonymus or um, hebe, perhaps something like that. Pittosporum is also very good. So enjoy your flower arranging and um, look forward to uh, hearing about how we all get on with National Flower Arranging Day and making a good display for everybody to see outside our homes. Thank you.